Oh, this is going to be a tough one. come and have this conversation with our peoples yeah okay you can be on the couch there you go baby play with your toy so I gotta talk to my people and this is very important and the reason why this is gonna be a tough one for me is because it's about being a stepmom I had four stepkids and they might be watching this video and they don't really know the feelings that I felt but they will now um, it took me a few years to speak on this but i feel like i'm ready to talk and they are all adults now so if they're watching i hope they understand and not take it to the heart or take it personal because i feel like a lot of step parents feel this way i grew up in a large family five siblings and 13 nieces and nephews excuse me i'm talking you just gonna make all that noise the story all four of my sisters had kids at a young age I've always wanted children since I was 19 years old and as time went on I've always dated women with children I didn't go out looking for them now I wasn't out there hunting it just happened to be that way so as for children of my own I didn't look deep into it until I was married I went from being single with no kids to all of a sudden being in a relationship with four kids and a grandbaby. And I believe I was 29 or 30. I'm not quite sure with the age, but around that time. And as time went on, that one grandchild turned into five grandchildren. Big family. But even when I dated women with children, I always understood that the kids come first. And me knowing that and understanding that, gizmo. Hold on guys, <laughs> he's doing too much. And me understanding that, going into the marriage, usually the person with the children would let their partners know ahead of time that my kids will always come first. Well, guess what? My ex-wife did not have to tell me that. I already understood it. But I wanted her to know from me, your kids come first, even before you. And I know they're your children. I'm in that role and in that position and I love these kids that even before you, your kids will come first to me. So let's talk about my stepkids. Um, when I got into the relationship, the youngest was 12 and the oldest was 19. The 19 year old at the time um, already had her baby and she was already off living on her own, being independent, being a mother. So I didn't help raise her at all. I don't think that I fulfilled a parental role in her life, but I was there as more of a an adult role in her life to where I would give advice and have conversations, stuff like that. I was actually close to her baby. Her baby, oh, she's the cutest. He was actually like three months old when I got involved. The younger three, think about it. They're teenagers, so there's a lot that comes to play. There's puberty, there's the hormonal changes, but on top of that, they come from an unstable household, from both parents, not just one. And in my opinion, I feel like one did play more of a parental role, but they were also very selfish in a lot of ways, and the other parent was more of a friend to the kids. They, they dealt with a lot and I understood the situation that I was in. Now mind you, because I never had kids of my own and everyone that I've dated with children, I was never in that committed relationship to where I helped raise them, okay? Especially from birth. I never raised infants to toddlers to preteens, no. I just jumped right in into teenage years. I had to learn quickly with no parental experience. Now mind you, I know there's not a, a, a book on how to be a parent, but you learn these things as time goes on. You're learning your mistakes, so on and so forth. I didn't get those 12 years that my ex-wife already had. I had to just learn quickly on how to fill in that role. And especially in a two-woman household. You know, it's, this, is, this is no father-mother household. So it's a little different. Especially when one of the teenagers starts to have boys over to the house and you know, 
These boys think they can get away with shit because there's two women in the house. <laughs> you must be joking. I am a protective person, especially when it comes to girls and women in general. You ain't gonna come in this house and play that little slick shit. Cause even though there's no man in the house, I put my motherfucking foot down. You ain't just gonna be all up in the room. Uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. Ask my stepdaughter. These boys were nervous around me, okay? And I'm not trying to put fear in them, but at the same time, I'm trying to let them know that you can't take advantage of my stepdaughter or our family in our home. Ain't gonna happen. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. And I will say, um, even though their mom and dad had a lot of faults and the kids upbringing, these parents love their children, okay? They love their kids and they'll do anything to make sure that their kids are okay. I just wanna make that clear. But they were young parents and they were kids raising kids. So there was a lot that went wrong to where it could have caused a lot of trauma with the kids and stuff like that. But I'll get into that later. As for me, I um, once I stepped into that role, I was providing a lot and um, I felt at times that I was providing more than the parents. For example, there was one day where we were having the kids for the summer and, and one of my stepsons came to the house and his lawn sleeve literally came up to here, okay? He obviously outgrown this shit. His jeans on the bottom were completely ripped. His shoes look worn the fuck out and it pissed me off so bad when I saw this. I'm like, we're not even going inside the house. We just got home. I'm like, we're not going inside the house. We're gonna go to the store right now and we're gonna get you some clothes. Sure enough, we went to the store and I bought some clothes for him. It was just like, oh, just so upsetting. I didn't have the funds for it. Like, I just got this house for the family and I'm barely making it. I have no money to spend on myself, but I made it work. Like I did a lot of overtime just to make sure that the kids were okay. Some of you might be a little confused on why um, I say that we had the kids for the summer. Well, their father had full custody of the kids um, and he lived in a different state. So when I got into the re relationship with my ex-wife, she just got out of prison. She served three and a half years in federal prison. This was before I came into the story. And she told me the situation and she just got out not too long ago and she's working two jobs at the time and she was really trying, trying really, really hard. And she would always take those trips to that other state to make sure um, she was there for her kids and she did her best with what she was given. And I wanna make it clear too, before she went into prison, she had full custody of all the kids. So she's not a bad mother. I wanna put that out there. Just shit happened in life where she felt that she had to do some things for her family and at the end, she lost everything because of it. So coming out of prison, she did her best. But when I got involved, I noticed, you know, when it comes to custody and kids, I like a lot of, there's a lot of shit that goes down. Um, there's a lot of power um, that the person with the full custody has and they know they have and they take advantage of the situation. So there was times where their father would get upset with their mother and it has nothing to do with the kids, but because he's on a power trip, he would literally not let her see her kids. And that pissed me off because I know how much she loved her children and I'm like, that shit ain't gonna slide. I don't like that shit, it ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. So I literally picked her up one day, this is before we lived together, and I said, we're going to this state. I don't wanna say the state, but uh, we're gonna go to the state and all the kids are in school. We're gonna go to the library out there and we're gonna fill out some paperwork so you can have joint custody of these kids. So that's exactly what we did. I drove her to that state, she filled up all the paperwork, I made sure that we did not leave until every T was crossed and every I was dotted and she got joint custody. So the kids stayed with their father for school. We had them for the summer, winter break, spring break. And later on down the road, my ex-wife got full custody of one of my stepdaughters and she lives with us full time. So I was there for the kids, not just financially, but emotionally. I was there for their heartbreaks with their boyfriend, girlfriends, even the heartbreaks that 
that was caused from their parents, I was there to comfort them, to talk to them, to have these conversations that they're not used to having. I was there for the sex talk because neither of the parents were comfortable to talk to the kids about it. Parents out there, you know when your kids are being sexually active. You just know. And I knew when my stepkids were being sexually active. Well, I had to make sure that we provide these kids with enough information to make sure that they're safe. My stepdaughter that lived with us was having hard times when she was living with her father. Uh, she ran away from home and missing for a couple weeks and we found her. All the way from Illinois, we found her. We actually drove to the state to pick her up from where she was at. And we brought her back home, which is why my ex-wife has full custody. She was having hard times. She was literally about to drop out of school when she was with dad. I made sure that was not gonna happen when she lived with us because she's got so much potential. This little girl is smart. She is mature for her age and she Just thinking about it. I just don't think that she saw her potential in herself. And sorry, guys. And I wanted her to see it. So anytime she got into some trouble at school or I felt that the teachers were not being fair to her and not being understanding, I made sure that we had meetings and I was there for them. I was there for the parent-teacher conference. I did as much as I could. Ooh, child. I knew this was gonna be a tough one. And in doing so, I was also the disciplinarian. Whenever the kids made bad decisions, there was some type of discipl discipline involved. Whenever they do make those mistakes, I want them to learn their lessons, which is why we would ground them, we would take away their phone, take away their games, not let them go out with their friends on the weekends. And a lot of these decisions did come from me because mom was friend. Mom was their friend. And I had to step in as a disciplinarian in the house because although experts will tell you that the step parents should never be the chief disciplinarian because it will backfire on them, I still felt that I had to be because if there was no other parent that was able to step in and discipline, then I took on that role and I knew the kind of consequences that can happen from it if I did it but I took those chances. And I mean, later on, it, it did backfire a little bit, which caused a lot of my ex-wife's family members, siblings, um, her mom, and extended family members to have an opinion about our household because of it. And my stepkids are kids. They were young and not understanding the situation and they can be very upset their stepmom is is telling them what to do when mom won't even tell them what to do so i'm sure they were very emotional about those about those moments and so they would go back to my ex-wife's family and vent so instead of these adults on my ex-wife's side of the family, having them understand why I was making these decisions instead of just listening to my stepkids vent, they added fuel to the fire and they just caused a lot more problems in our household than they should have, which made it very difficult. Disciplinary action only happened when there was bad grades in school or any disrespect was happening. By the way, my stepkids are very respectful. They were teenagers. They have their moments and it happens. And I made sure that before I disciplined that I have conversations with them. So I would be in the rooms with them and talk to them and explain to them this has to happen because of their actions. But I also always let them know that I still love them and I know you're upset I know you're mad at me and I understand, but I still want you to know that I love you and I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this so that you understand that there's consequences to your negative actions. I always let them know that I love them, but I also rewarded their good behavior. Every time they went from 
a D to a B. And any type of action that I saw that was, that they went out of their way to do, to show any type of effort, they were rewarded. Because just like consequences to negative actions, there's rewards and benefits to your positive actions. Guys, I took them out to concerts, to weekend getaways, to vacations. I took them to their first flight on a plane, to Universal Studios, to Las Vegas. Like I, I wanted them to have an awesome childhood. These were things that I wasn't able to do because I grew up poor. And honestly, at the time, I still was living off paycheck to paycheck, but I worked overtime every week to make sure that they have awesome experiences and memories not just the troubles and the struggles i wanted them to be happy i want to talk about my proudest moments being a stepmom the fact that my stepkids were very respectful to the adults and to me and to their parents their parents raised them on their own and they deserve all the credit for that i liked to see that continuing while i was while i was there but like i said they they were going through some troubles and my stepdaughter was dealing with it the hardest so she was struggling as a teenager and when she came and lived with us uh she was the tough cookie i did what i had to do to keep her on the right path one of my proudest moments is that when she lived with us Mind you, when she was with dad, she ran away. She was out doing things she shouldn't have been doing. Didn't go, wasn't going to school. Being a rebellious teenager. But when she was with us, I'm very proud to say that she never ran away. She never snuck out of the house. And um, another proudest moment that I have with my stepdaughter is that she graduated high school. She did it. She did it. And as an adult now, she has kids of her own. After my ex-wife and I divorced, she talked to me on the phone and she cried. She apologized for everything and she thanked me. She said that if it wasn't for me, she would have never graduated high school. So, ooh, that was, that was a reward. That is what I'm happy about knowing, leaving the relationship that I helped the kids in some way. That's just a couple proudest moments. I also want to talk about my failures as a stepmom. I believe I was too strict. I was so protective of my stepkids due to my experiences growing up that I didn't allow them to have their own experiences and learn on their own. I just didn't want them to be another statistic due to their shortcomings and their trauma. Because of that, I kept them on a short leash. And I realized um, as years passed on that they needed room to breathe. But I also did not want to be too lenient because that's what I believe their parents were. So I should have been somewhere in the middle but as you parents know, there's no book to being a parent. So jumping into a situation with, with teenage kids, I had to learn quickly and that was my downfall. As a stepmom, I, I was too strict. Being a step parent, I loved these kids. I loved every single one of them, including the grandkids. I don't have any of my own and I've always wanted kids. I try to have children of my own with my ex-wife. I did go through six IUI procedures to try to conceive and they all failed. So I wasn't able to have a child of my own. So when that happened in the marriage, these children were gonna be the only kids I ever have in life. They were my kids and I treated them that way. But what also comes along with that is there was some hard times as a stepmom. And one of them was feeling lonely because by the end of the day, I am not their biological mother. They are not my biological kids. So whenever I would have arguments, the kids would always go to her to comfort her and to hug her and to be on her side. They never got involved in our arguments, but from time to time, they felt the tension. After an argument that we had, they see that their mom is feeling a little down. So they would always go and comfort her to where I didn't have that. Even during the times where my ex-wife was at fault, that's still mom. And they're still protective over mom and they still wanna make sure mom is okay. Even when they know she's wrong and that's normal and that's natural. During those times, was it was the hardest for me because I didn't have that comfort. I didn't get to feel 
loved during those moments. Especially during the first few years of our relationship, um, Mother's Day was hard for me, especially after failing to conceive and making the, the decision to not try anymore, that I was going to live the rest of my life without having a biological child. Mother's Day was and still is hard for me. So during those first few years, the kids would do something sweet for their mother and I of course would do something sweet for her as well. But it seemed like I would never got recognized or appreciated for my role in the family as a stepmom. And I think a lot of step parents feel that way. Um, not all, but a lot, until I actually opened up and I talked to my ex-wife about it and how I felt. I think she had a conversation with her kids separately um, when I wasn't around because shortly after, when Mother's Day came around, they did recognize me. <laughs> they did recognize the fact that I was also mom and I got my happy Mother's Day. Another reason why it was hard at times was what I've already talked about when um, my ex-wife's side of the family would get involved in our household. They made sure to talk down on me to the kids and they made sure to say a lot of bad things about me um, when I wasn't around or on social media or they just made it very difficult for me and I wish they knew where my heart was. I wish they understood why I made certain decisions, but they didn't. And a lot of it stems from me being a step parent, me not being their biological parent. And a lot of their feelings was I shouldn't have a say in certain things, but I was the head of the household. <laughs> so it's like, you have to respect me in some way. If you really got to know me on a personal level, you would understand that my intentions were always good. Not good, great. I love these kids, I wouldn't do anything to harm them. And um, it, it was, it was a, an emotional roller coaster having to deal with that. It was, it was difficult, I will say that. And it's, it's crazy because after the, after the divorce, um, my mother-in-law, I think she understood it a little bit more. And she started to reach out to me and talk to me and stuff, but what's done is done. So speaking about the divorce, the aftermath as a stepmom. I knew that once the divorce was gonna happen, I knew that I wasn't going to have the same relationship that I did that I had with my stepkids. And that's gonna be from both sides. I would love to be there for my stepkids for the rest of their lives, but in all reality, I am no longer married to their mother. Once I start the dating process, some of these women might have problems with me still having a relationship with my stepkids because they are not my biological children. That's a connection that still, that I would still choose to have with my ex-wife, knowing that they're not my kids, that might cause some problems. And I'm okay with still doing that and having a relationship with my kids after the fact, after the divorce. But by the end of the day, I don't have kids. I am single with no children. And I don't want it to be a problem when it's just a fact. That's what it is, I don't have any kids. But I'm not just gonna let go that easily. Um, I still talk to my stepdaughter the tough cookie. <laughs> um, I have my relationship with her still. I talk to her on the phone. I send her some money from time to time to make sure she's okay. She still vents to me about certain things and you know, I'm, I'm her, I'm still like her go-to for advice and just a person to vent to. And I don't want to leave her stranded like that. I try to reach out to my stepson, the youngest, um, from time to time, but he's a boy. <laughs> So, you know, he's out doing his own thing. You know, boys have more of an independence to wear. Like they don't, the whole communication thing is not there. So whenever he comes around, you know, I'll be here. At the very end, I don't have a relationship with three of them. Still have a relationship with one of them, but I know eventually like the distance will happen and I am okay with it when it happens. But it was hard experiencing my other stepkids move away, distancing themselves. So 
That sucks when you're a step parent having to deal with a divorce because I went back to having no kids while these kids stayed with mom and that kind of sucks. But that's what it is. That was my experience as a stepmother. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took a lot from it. If you're a step parent, comment below. Let me know how your experience was or is. And if you can relate to anything that I said here, it'll be awesome to read. Thank y'all for watching again. I appreciate y'all and I will see you in the next video. Peace.